It's 9 a.m. and I'm busy at work, writing my next article. Or am I? This behaviour has been coined as productivity theatre, a show that workers put on in the office. But now it's easier than ever, as working from home became a norm during the pandemic. Enter creative solutions like mouse jigglers and other cheap tricks to remain online and give the impression that one is actively working. But employers are trying to stay ahead of the curve with the help of monitoring software or bossware to catch their staff that might be skiving or having that extended nap. Humans, you know, don't sit with a page of Microsoft Word up, the mouse moving for three hours, right? They're typing, they're saving a document, they're tabbing into other applications, they're doing a search on the internet. So it's just flagged as inactive time within Microsoft Word. While employee monitoring software now has the capability to see everything on one's desktop in real time. From keystrokes, browsing activity, emails, chat apps, some have taken surveillance to the extreme. In China, for example, some workers have called the state of work a dystopian nightmare. These intrusive behaviours include installing cameras in toilets, using AI that flags employees who are looking for a new job, and emotion recognition systems that can assess how happy workers are in the office. What are the implications if employee surveillance becomes the new norm? Micromanagers have long existed in workplaces. But as companies grapple with rising costs and shrinking budgets, employers want to make sure they're getting their money's worth. And sometimes, that means squeezing value from employees as much as possible. That has fueled what Microsoft calls productivity paranoia, where bosses worry about whether their employees are working enough. In fact, 85% of leaders have trouble believing that their workers are being productive. It's definitely not new. There's been surveillance since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. There was punch cards for people to come in and out of factories. So there's always been a desire by employers to keep track of what employees are doing. But that has increased excessively over the last few years. Even pre-COVID, largely under the guise of ensuring uh, workplace safety and uh, confidentiality and protecting the business. Demand for employee monitoring software has skyrocketed since the pandemic. VPN review website Top 10 VPN reported that searches for employee monitoring software increased by 75% in March 2020, compared to the 2019 monthly average. Demand remained strong in 2021 and 2022. Another report found that close to 80% of employers use monitoring software to track employee performance and online activity. Some managers have taken it even further, storing recordings of staff calls, emails or messages to evaluate their employees' performance. Veriato is one of many employee monitoring software companies worldwide that has experienced a boom in sales due to the pandemic. I installed Veriato on my computer for a day to find out exactly what managers using a monitoring software would be able to see. So yesterday, you were 1% productive because we have not selected the productivity information. Employers can determine which sites are productive or unproductive. For example, sites like Twitter and YouTube would most likely be considered unproductive. These are the sites you were working yesterday, throughout the day. Google.com, Google Chrome, Login Window, Outlook. This is the bifurcation of the whole day. Screen captures were done every five seconds, and no surprise, every conversation I had on Slack and Microsoft Teams was captured as well. One of Veriato's latest features utilizes psycholinguistics, where employers could get an indication if workers are satisfied at work through their language. There are by default some keywords which we have already put, like president, interview. Somewhere mm -hmm. you've written interview. That's why it yeah. got alert. Is it because employers want to know if they're employees are leaving for a next job. <laughs> we always put it in a very positive way. You know, it's always good for the employer to know if the employee is looking for a job. Maybe they are not happy with something. So they can have a candid discussion with them. But these tools are not just for monitoring employees' productivity. During the pandemic, employee identity theft and other fraudulent activities were on the rise as more work-from-home initiatives were introduced. That meant more gaps in security. According to cybersecurity firm Checkpoint, cyber attacks in Asia Pacific increased by 168% year on year in May 2021. 
And in a separate report, IBM said that Asia is now the most targeted region for cyber attacks, with Australia, Japan and India the hardest hit. Monitoring tools can help increase a company's online security and reduce the risk of data breaches. Now you have employees all over the place. And so part of that contract between the employee and the business is I'm going to take a corporate device to a personal location. I think a lot of employees understand if I can have this flexibility, it's okay for the company to be understanding what's happening on my work device. But not all employees feel the same way. Research has shown that those who know they are being watched report feeling more anxiety and pressure to work longer hours. In fact, a study showed that employee monitoring has great potential in backfiring. Monitored employees were substantially more likely to take unapproved breaks, disregard instructions and purposefully work at a slow pace. Arjun is a software engineer who worked for the startup remotely in Canada. My manager would bring up some statistics in our uh, one-on-one meetings. There would be statistics like, oh, you're idle for X amount of time, but I was finished early and they're like, oh, you should be working on something else. Time Doctor, another employee monitoring software, was installed on his company laptop. If I don't move anything on my computer, they know that and I hate that because most of the time when I work, I'll focus on a task for a little bit and then I'll maybe take a break, watch a YouTube video. Employers can also compare the productivity scores of workers, identifying the high performers and those who are not. I think it does kind of help be a little bit more productive, but at the same time, it's also counterintuitive because what I would do is I would try to make my tasks longer to fill in the time. In my head, I was like, why well, do it as fast as I can? Because no matter what, they're still tracking me for a certain amount of time. Jaya Das is a HR expert and the managing director of Randstad Singapore and Malaysia. She believes that employee surveillance could have negative impacts on organisations in the long run. If surveillance intent is to control, to make sure that my employee is seated for X number of hours at the desk, that they're not surfing social media, then the entire basis of remote working is lost. That is a breach of trust. That is a breach of personal privacy. That is observing the human being as a commodity. You're not managing the emotional and the mental state of the employee, which is actually the real essence behind productivity, engagement. As artificial intelligence and machine learning push the boundaries of employee monitoring, there has been more scrutiny over whether existing laws are enough to protect workers' privacy. In 2021, China introduced its first comprehensive law on rules around data collection of personal information, modelling the EU's General Data Protection Regulation. Other countries in Asia have also introduced data privacy laws or enhanced existing ones, such as Indonesia, Japan and Singapore. The thing about um, employee surveillance is that it will often be something that's referenced in the middle of an employment contract. It won't necessarily be expressly pointed out you know, with a big red finger saying this is what we're doing. So usually you'll see a provision that will explain that the employer has the right to monitor all emails and phone calls and those purposes will be very broad. When you're looking at your contract, you're not looking for those clauses. You're looking for how much am I going to get paid? How much holiday do I get? What benefits do I have? You will probably skip over all those sections to do with data privacy because they're not important to you at that point in time. Veriato said that regardless of geographical location, it would suggest clients to disclose the usage of its software to employees. But employers can still choose to install its software in stealth mode, making it much harder for workers to find out if they are being tracked. So, if you are an employee concerned about your privacy, is there anything that you can do other than not using work laptops for personal use? The first thing they can do is if they're about to enter into a new contract, they can read that contract thoroughly and find the provisions in relation to data protection and employee monitoring. And they become concerned later on that their data has been used in a way that they are not comfortable with. Then all employees have the right to raise a complaint, a grievance. There are various jurisdictions that have that right for employees to make a data access request. So if none of that satisfies the uh, employee, then you have the right to go and complain to the Data Privacy Commissioner of your, your jurisdiction. And if you can't stop employers from micromanaging you, you may be able to beat them at their own game. Arjun, for example, created a software called Lazy Work, which claims it mimics human activity online. It takes control of like your keyboard and your mouse. It seems like a real human is interacting with the computer. 
but nothing is really being done. But the time tracking software on their side, it shows you as being very productive. Arjun says that his software, however, does not encourage workers to be lazy, despite its name. This tool could be used for bad, but I think at the end of the day, if you don't do the work, and even if you use this tool, the work isn't completed. This is just to kind of like give you that buffer time of, oh, I want to take a break, or I feel like I've done enough for today. 